Welcome back to another episode of Shed Life UK and today we are going to talk about my new car. Now I know it's not a shed, it's a little bit out of that price range. I paid £9,000 for this BMW 330i. It's from 2010 so not to be confused with the 03 personal plate that it's running. Uh, I love a personal plate, to be honest I think it's gas. Uh, it's running 280-ish brake horsepower at the moment and yeah, I'm just going to run you through my first impressions of my car. So Josh, we're now in the E92, and what we all want to know is how does it compare to the 36 and the 1 Series? Well, number one, it works, so it's better than the 36 straight off the bat. Well, that's on jack stands 24-7, oh, so... Oh, mate, that thing... I bought it for the channel, but Jesus, that thing has a lot of work. But no, it is massively, massively different. Like, I'm running 280-ish brake horsepower in this at the moment. It's okay. got a DCAT exhaust, pop and bang map, so it has been tuned. Um, it's really quick. It's really quick. I've only can really compare it to the diesel one series, which is a two liter engine mapped absolutely terribly. Uh, so when I was on the throttle, it was like, uh, 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 it was on off power throughout the range. Whereas on this, it's got constant power through the gears. It's really, it, the power comes in smooth. It, it is really, really nice to drive. Okay. So you've got nice smooth power, which is obviously a quality of the BMW straight six. And Silky smooth. A hundred more horsepower, you're saying? Yeah, it is night and day difference. It's, it is quite, quite scary in the wet because if I get on the power in the same places that I would in the one series, like mid corner, it the back will come round on okay. me. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to adapt the way that I drive to to predict and make sure that I'm not doing anything that's going to put me in a hedge or a ditch. So. Fair point, and 100 horsepower difference is basically the equivalent of an E46 330 to an M3, so this must feel like a rocket ship. Oh, it does, it really does, and it's so much fun to drive. Okay, brilliant. So how does the comfort, like, of the ride mainly, so we'll go for the ride quality, and okay. I'm gonna mention this, because I've just had my Monster Energy here go all over my leg, because the bumps <laughs> have sent it flying, so, it's yeah. fairly firm, firm, but it doesn't <laughs> absorb the bumps quite as well as you'd want it to. No, I think I think that that is down to the fact that the guy that I bought this off has put it on some coilovers. So yes, it does stiff up the ride. It okay. is really, really lovely to put it into corners. But on the flip side of that, it is horrible when you hit a bump or a divot or any a dip, anything. It just, it's so stiff. Like it is really not, it's not brilliant, but I think that's down to the co like the coilover quality okay. rather than the car. Okay, so it's definitely a room for improvement, maybe some KWs, maybe some Bilsteins and so on. Oh, 100%. Oh, okay. I, I, I'm probably going to put it on B uh, BC Racings. Okay. Because people rave about them. I think that's probably a safe Fair bet. point. So that's the future mods. Now, we've said about, oh, see, my junk's going everywhere. So it's firm, it feels nice, but Monster Energy is going everywhere, yeah, which is I not know. a good quality of the car. So what I want to know next is, how's the interior compared to your other cars? Lovely. Uh, this is my first full leather adjustable seating arrangement. So like in the in the 36, it's got full levers, but it's you Manual can't adjust. Yeah, you can't adjust anything. Like you could literally tilt the seat back. That's about it. And now we've got electric seats. I've got electric seats. I can go forward, back, up, down, left, right, bolsters in, bolsters out. And the best feature, which I cannot stress enough, it has made this car so lovely, is the fact that when I go and get it valeted, and the guy that's cleaning my car changes all my seating position, and I can't work out 
how I had it before. All I gotta do, press memory one, bang. Straight back to how Jumped I had up. it before. It's absolutely amazing. So that feature is really useful, isn't it? I love it. It, it is so good. I've never had that before. And I would spend sort of two, three days trying to work out why my seat didn't feel quite right. Yep, we all do. Um, how's this on long journeys? Not good. Go on, no, why, no. why is it not good on long journeys? <laughs> when I set cruise control, okay. uh, it hits this sort of rev and it sits in this really odd, like... An odd rev range. Yeah, so what's, what's, just... What's it, what, what does it do? It just drones. It really drones on and on and on. It's just this monotone... Uh... Okay. So why do we think this is, Josh? <laughs> well, I have no idea why, but it could <laughs> potentially be linked to the fact that it's got a DK exhaust. <laughs> I think that's right. It's and a trade-off though, because it is. if you if you like your car to sound like this, sounds pretty good, and pop and bang, then it's worth it. But if you want to just drive this spiritly round town and you're only going to go to the shop and that, don't do it. You're going to have a headache. So don't mod your exhaust to a stupid system. In other words, maybe a nice tasteful system. I yeah, I think just like anything else with cars. Um, Go for, the, go for the expensive option, otherwise you're going to pay for it twice in the end anyway. Exactly. Buy cheap, buy twice. Exactly. And then maybe pick the sensible option sometimes. Now, I'm 22. I've, I've still got enough enough youth on my side to get away with driving this at the that's, moment. That's a very fair point. So we've covered most things. Is there anything you really don't like other than the droning? Uh, there's probably one thing that I don't really like about this car. Okay, and what's that? Is I love old cars, like got the 36, love all BMWs that are old, 30s, all that. This is probably the newest car that I would ever buy. Okay. And already I can see annoying technology that I'm not 100% a fan of. Like, okay. why do I need a machine to give me my seatbelt 30% of the time? Very, very It good doesn't point. even work. It's just another electrical factor that can go wrong. Like, why would you overcomplicate a system We've that's got... going to make it go back into a shop anyway? I want to spend my time driving. I don't want it in a garage getting some stupid electrics fixed. We've got fun BMW somehow, and that's all their needless technology they put oh, on no, it. No, it's just... But other than that, I absolutely love this car. Like, it's by far the best thing I've ever owned. Fantastic. So I think that really sums up our drive, doesn't it? It does indeed. So we're going to cut to the outro, and we'll leave it at that. Perfect. So there you have it. That is my new BMW. If you want to see in a future episode me compare my E92 330 to Ryan's E46 330, stay tuned for that. Remember, like, comment, share and subscribe and we will see you in the next one. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.